All right, guys, good afternoon. Welcome to the Cantec and Stonelock uh, integration presentation. Uh, we're very excited to, to host this presentation today. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about the integration between Stonelock and Cantec. And you guys are going to see it's not just two products tied together and off we go. We, as a team, both teams sat together and, and built something uh, really, really cool. So before uh, we go on further, uh, we have Greg Harmon here that works for Stonelock. Yeah. And myself, Tom Gift of Crystals. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, so yeah, uh, for those that uh, that don't know who I am, I see some some new names on that list. Uh, my name is Greg Harmon, uh, and uh, Cantech is a product line that's near and dear to my heart. I spent uh, about 13 years uh, working with that, with that product line uh, before joining Stonelock a little over a year ago. Uh, so uh, yeah, and, and we have a, a, a number of members on our team that uh, also share that that passion for Cantech. So to Tom's point, we have uh, what we're going to show you today. We have built a, a it's it's different than just you know a typical integration. Like it, it's a true partnership, and you're going to see it in how how seamless and simple we've made the integration uh, between the two products and, and the the sort of support strategy we have for it. But we're we're really proud with uh, with what we've done here, and I, I think we've. It's a bit of a game changer for the, the world of biometrics to finally make it easy. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Greg. So, uh, again, you guys don't know me. I'm Tom Gifter Christos. I worked for Cantec for almost uh, 16 years now. So, uh, I've seen a lot of integrations out there. And when we started the integration with Stonelock, um, they sent me a unit, like a beta unit in, in a cardboard box. Here you go. Uh, no manuals, which I like because it, it helped me figure out the unit very fast. And within about two, three hours, it's up and running, no help. So the integration was built seamlessly into Cantec, and it's very simple. I'll be very fair with you guys. Uh, it's a beautiful reader that just plugs into EntrePass. And as a customer of EntrePass, which is a lot of you guys are, the integration is, is mostly on EntrePass a visual. There's no, you don't have to re-teach re your, your people on how to use the integration. It's seamless. For the integration so um a really tight integration and we and you'll see throughout the presentation we just didn't tie the product together we also tied the business together it's not an add-on bolt-on and we're done we actually said you know how can we make it a, a full user experience for the dealer to the end user to the integrator to the rep the whole situation from a to z so i'm really really like this little product and it works pretty well and you guys can see one i've one in the back uh, I can take off my glasses or keep them on. It reads my face regardless, right? So, I think we should start. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do this. Yeah, perfect. So, so right? you tell us. Yeah, so a little bit about Stonelock. Um, as you can see on the title slide there, uh, we see people differently is our, our corporate philosophy. Um, I, working for Tyco Security Products and Cantec specifically, got exposed to a, a number of different biometric platforms. And people love the idea of biometrics. Uh, it's a way of ensuring that only the person that's going to gain entry to your door is the person that you assigned it to, right? Uh, pins can be can be shared, cards can be shared or cloned, but a, a biometric is going to ensure that the person only and, and only the person that I want entering that door is the one that that is gaining uh, access to it. Uh, so when we see we see people differently, what what we have done is is People love the idea, they get it deployed, and then they realize, wow, there's a lot of work required here, and there's a lot of software touch points, a lot of areas where we can make mistakes. And we have gone in and we have gone to painstaking lengths to try and simplify all of that. We've gotten rid of all of those uh, software touch points where administrators were making mistakes and users weren't getting authenticated. And uh, and we're letting users work right from the EntrePass uh, interface, which is great for me. I mean, I've spent uh, the last decade basically doing Cantech demos, and now that I'm at Stonelock, I'm doing more Cantech demos than ever, because uh, I get to show it how to manage it right from EntrePass, and I don't even have to go into my interface to get a user uh, enrolled in the system. So like uh, we see like people differently. Sorry, go ahead, Tom. I love when there's more demos for Cantech. There it is, yeah. So. Um, the other part that we see people differently is if you look in uh, uh, Tom's background, you can see at the top of the device, there's near infrared LEDs embedded in the in the face. But if you look in the top of the devices that are mounted behind me, you don't see uh, near infrared. And the reason for that is because Tom's camera picks up a little bit of near infrared light. Mine doesn't pick up any. 
but our sensor, our device is working in the near infrared, uh, non-visible spectrum. So we're not looking in the visible light spectrum, we're working in the non-visible. Uh, so we see people differently. It's all about uh, the way that we look at all the people who have touch points with our product from a corporate philosophy and then our, our, our technology, uh, it's, it's, we see people differently because we're looking at it in a completely different light spectrum. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, I'm based out of Toronto uh, and I'm a director of sales with Stonelock. Um, Yannick Brunet, uh, many people may know uh, Yannick. Uh, he was a part of Cantec in a, a management role for uh, the better part of two decades. And uh, he is our general manager at Stonelock uh, as well. Uh, he's based out of Vancouver. Uh, we have some development uh, personalities that are based out of Quebec, uh, also with uh, a lot of <laughs> Cantec uh, experience, which is probably an understatement. Uh, and then other than that, we have um, uh, we have a, most of our team is is right down in Kansas City. Uh, so you'll find our ownership, tech support, QA, engineering. Um, and another part of our, our business now is we're actually manufacturing the product up in Utica, New York. Uh, so we're using a world-class manufacturing facility actually that we're sharing with Alarm.com uh, right up in Utica. So one thing that we're really proud of is this biometric platform is, it's all ours. Uh, we own everything from the, the software to the hardware. We're not pulling in analytics from overseas or anything like that. We do everything from end to end and all the manufacturing, everything that I just described, all being done onshore. Very nice. All right. Um, so uh, I'll just talk real quick about the foundation of what the, this product is built on. Facial recognition, when you, you hear about it in the news and controversy surrounding facial recognition in California and, and other areas, uh, what that typically talks about is uh, a video analytic that is dropped on a camera and the camera's pointed in a public space and Tom walks in front of the camera and I'm able to go in and identify, okay, that's Tom, I'm gonna label Tom and now when Tom walks in front of the camera again, I can get an alert. Um, you know, the other alternative, maybe we send in a photograph of Tom and, I, and I'm able to do it that way. But in either scenario, Tom's being brought into a, uh, a facial recognition platform without his consent or knowledge. He didn't realize that he was being onboarded. It, it just happened. Um, our product, uh, from a privacy standpoint, does not do that. So users are going to have to consent. They're going to have to enroll. We're going to give you a demo of that here uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, and not only that, we do not accept pictures. We do not uh, take photographs or videos of users that are either authenticating or enrolling. Basically, from a privacy standpoint, users are going to enroll, uh, and that's going to generate a biometric key. To, to get to that key, that user's face has to be in front of our device. Uh, we're looking at them in that near infrared uh, spectrum, and then we're going to run the analysis on, on what's reflecting back to our sensor. But for us to get to that key, for us to, to, to get the, the analysis, that user has to be in front of the device. What we capture is not a JPEG or an MPEG or something that could be reverse engineered into a, an image of a user. From a security standpoint, near infrared is going to give us uh, a, a number of, of, of unique advantages. But uh, primarily, when you look at the way that near infrared will interact with the users, uh, the soft tissue of their face, the reflection that comes back from uh, the near infrared on our device from a, a user's face versus common uh, spoofing or hacking tools like a, a picture of a user or a 3D printed mask of a user, uh, what gets returned to our sensor from the near infrared are three unique results. So our company has been around since 2011. We've been a, a leader in the facial biometric space uh, since then with that science. And to date, we have no recorded cases of spoofing. Nobody's been able to, uh, to trick the, the reader into thinking it's somebody that's not. Um, and then the big thing that we're gonna focus on as we go through the presentation, like you know, privacy and security, that, that's been the foundation of Stonelock for years. And then this new product we're gonna show you today, the Stonelock Go, it's all about making life simple. Um, the section of the face that we're going to look at is just, just below the nose and just above the eyebrows. And the reason why we're looking here is because it's going to be the part of the face that's going to remain the most consistent. Uh, so as, as you know, your, your facial hair changes down here or, you know, ball caps and hard hats, um, the, the part of the face that we're going to look at is going to be the area that's going to, they're going to typically remain, uh, just, just above the upper lip, the, the most, uh, consistent area of the face. A uh, couple questions, uh, pop up on this slide every presentation. Uh, the first one is, uh, do we support glasses? You can see Tom's wearing glasses there. Uh, basically what we're gonna do, and that's, yeah, they're just they're just a prop, uh, but uh, the, re the reason why uh, 
why, why we're doing that is we will do a, an enrollment with glasses and we'll do an enrollment without glasses. So users will be able to verify uh, regardless, they won't have to, to take their glasses off. So uh, that's the one question we get. And then uh, February uh, last year, we started getting the question, you know, what about masks? And it pops up on the slide, it kind of triggers that for everybody. Uh, and the answer to that is today, uh, we are working just like an iPhone. So if you, if you have an iPhone and you need to authenticate on it, you have to pull your mask down. Uh, there's there's no difference with with Stolmach uh, on that. Uh, it is something we are working on. We're hoping that we're going to be able to to achieve that with a firmware update and a software update, but uh, it's still a work in progress. Um, so this is the device, and uh, just to give you a quick tour of it, uh, it's got a, a matte black trim around the outside. You got it. You can see it in, in behind uh, Tom there. Uh, piano black is the is the texture on the face. Uh, you have your near infrared LEDs embedded up here at the top of the device, and you can see it in Tom's uh, video there. Uh, it picks up a little bit of that near infrared that that's uh, being emitted from them. Uh, our sensor uh, is actually embedded in the uh, in the piano black face, so you don't see it. It's hiding in, in there, uh, just just below the uh, LED cluster. Uh, and then we have this really nice big bright display on the on the face of the device. Uh, just above that display, we have a, a, a QR code scanner as well. So a few things to just point out right out of the gate. Uh, uh, this device is going to be mounted at 48 inches uh, to the bottom of the device, 48 inches uh, from the ground. And at 48 inches, that's going to allow users uh, seven feet tall and also users uh, in a wheelchair to be able to authenticate um, at arm's length. So from an ADA compliance standpoint, at that mounting height, we've got that vertical field of view where we're able to capture all of that. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the other thing to, to, to notice about this is having that nice big bright display on the face of the device, uh, it allows us to do... Uh, a lot of things that are going to completely simplify your customer's uh, experience with with the biometric. Um, we uh, so right now you can see the in the picture there the face is blue, uh, and I'm going to give a demo for you here in a second. You're going to see when uh, when I present my face, you're going to see a scan line start, and in about a quarter of a second, it's going to turn green to say we recognize this user. If uh, if we don't recognize that user, it's going to turn red. Um, so what this display is going to do for us is not just show users what's happening at the door so that they can understand if they're you know, being recognized or not, uh, but what we're gonna be able to do with it is the exact same thing that you probably, uh, most of you would have experienced with your iPhone or your Android. Um, when you enroll your biometric on your phone, you didn't have the, the Genius Bar or Geek Squad or any of this stuff have to help you, you didn't have to call Tom to get him to support you getting your biometric in your phone, uh, you just follow the prompts on the screen. And we're doing the same thing here. Uh, we're, we're literally going to just give a about 18 second long process. It's just step by step, really simple to follow. 18 seconds later, users ready to start their day. Uh, it is it is simple enough that they can self enroll without without the traditional hand holding the biometrics. So we are using a new process, uh, and I'm going to jump into a demo right after this slide, and then Tom's going to talk for a bit. But um, we're using a process that we call first read enrollment. And this is a, a game changer for uh, how we simplify biometric onboarding. So just to step back from, from first read enrollment for a second, typically onboarding a biometric into a, into a system, uh, if, if Tom was showing up and he said, hey, I'd like to be uh, you know, put in the biometric system, I would have to open up software typically. Uh, I'd have to find Tom's profile. Uh, I would have to find the device that I want to enroll Tom on. Some, sometimes it even has to be a dedicated enrollment station, not with us. Uh, select start, walk Tom over to the device, do the enrollment with him, show him, show him what to do, walk back to the software and download Tom to the, to the other devices where I want him to be able to work or, or be able to authenticate. Uh, with us, we eliminate 100% of those steps. We don't do any of that. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to use a process called first read enrollment. First read enrollment uh, is basically, uh, you know, you, you're going to have two categories of customers. You're going to have some customers that just present their face or some users, I should say. And then you're going to have some users that want to do card plus face. In that two factor scenario, we know because they were programmed inside of Cantech, we know uh, that this card number is linked to this user. So when this user shows up to an enrollment reader for the first time or a reader that has been toggled on to allow for enrollment, all they have to do is present their card and this screen will come to life and walk them through this really simple to follow enrollment process. When it's done, they, they go and start their day. It's about 18 seconds, they show up, tap their card, follow the prompts, 
18 seconds later, they're ready to authenticate on the next reader. And I'm gonna do a demo for you, and I'm gonna enroll on this reader over here, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna walk over here, and I'm gonna authenticate there, and you're gonna see it's, it, it happens instantaneously. Uh, so that's for card plus space users. There is no software touch point. I did not have to log into software to, to, to start any of this. I did not have to log into software to broadcast that biometric to the different readers. The second way that this is going to work is um, when I go inside of EntrePass uh, and I create a user, there's an email field there. And if that is if that is filled out, what we will do for those users is as soon as we hit save and EntrePass, we will Stonelock will generate a unique QR code that is uniquely that user's, and you have a toggle option to automatically send that user an email with that QR. So now they get a, a, an enrollment request email, and when they show up with it. The, the person doing the administration is just going to say, oh, do you, you got that email? Yeah, open it up. Okay, you have your QR. Now just show it to the device, follow the prompts on the screen, and start your day. Uh, again, no, no software touch points. So I feel like I've been doing a lot of talking on it, and we should probably maybe jump into a, uh, an actual hands-on demo. Let's cool. All right, let's Exciting. do it. Uh, I'm going to, uh, before we do that, uh, let me show you what it looks like. Oh. Jump over here. So StoneLog does have an interface, like you said, right? Yes. Uh, but a lot of it is running through EntrePass, as you're going to see. Most of the demo exactly. will be EntrePass, right? Which is pretty yeah, cool. so when we do typical demos, we're just showing EntrePass. And uh, if, if you guys haven't seen this, you know, if you're new to Cantech, the uh, EntrePass Go app makes managing your, your access control system really simple. So, you know, your users are going to get to live in here. But the first thing I'm going to show you is this is my list of users. And if I pop over to StoneLock, you're going to see basically those are mirrors of one another. All the users that I created in EntrePass are going to be mirrored. We're going to just pull all the information that we need from, from EntrePass. If I go back in, I'll show you just so you can see how quickly the integration works. And I'm going to delete my profile inside of uh, uh, inside of EntrePass Go. And you can see that that user that I had created for myself down here at the bottom gone in real time. So one of the great parts about the integration to start with is everything we do is live and in real time. I don't have to uh, wait for a polling sequence to kick in an hour from now or 20 minutes from now to do a full database sync. We're pulling just the changes down. So much faster and uh, much leaner. So uh, I'm going to put in my, uh, my name. I'm going to put in my email address. And I'm going to put in my card number. Uh, let's do 36, and I'm going to click Save. So I create my user in EnterPass, and I only show our interface just to to point out that you know that user with card number 36 was pulled down in real time. Uh, we pulled down their the uh, my name, we pulled down my card number, my status. Uh, EnterPass, you can have five card numbers if you're marking them lost or stolen. We'll we'll manage all of that. We'll pull all the card numbers that we need. Uh, so you'll have all five card numbers potentially here. Uh, the email address I entered is there as well. Uh, and then you can see that we uh, we created uh, for myself uh, a unique QR code. Um, the other thing that happened there is as soon as I hit save, and again, I haven't touched anything in Stonelock, as soon as I hit save in Cantech, uh, I receive an email, uh, and that email is my enrollment email. So I'm a face-only user. Uh, I'm going to get an email that has my QR code. All I have to do to enroll is show that QR code to the device and follow the prompts on the screen. So. Let me uh, stop sharing this with you, and uh, I'm going to jump over, and Tom's going to narrate this part. Yeah, and I put your full screen, Greg, so turn on my camera also. Perfect. So now that I've got the QR code, uh, before that, Greg's going to show up to the reader, and he's going to see that his face is not even programmed anymore. When he deleted it before, it gets wiped out. So in about three, four seconds, it gets scanned, and the reader goes red. That means he's not a valid user as a Stonelock unit, and both units don't actually allow him a uh, valid card. He takes his QR code and he presents it in front of the reader. The QR code lights up and now he starts the enrollment process. He, all he has to do is say about alarms length away and relax his face and follow the prompts with his glasses on if he has any. And then he just follows the little dot that's gonna appear which is gonna enroll his face. It's gonna scan the face that we talked about before, the middle part. And, and then to take another image without the glasses. So if you don't have any glasses, you remove them. And now the face will be enrolled and will become a biometrics key, a unique key and algorithm that belongs to that person. And that's the enrollment. Now you guys saw the log went green. And when you start in front of it, it automatically becomes green letting it through. 
And look at that. Now that reader also became green instantaneously. So the moment that reader got accepted, it automatically sent it up to the uh, the software and to the other readers automatically. So automatically, uh, all the readers on that Stonelog Go software or platform have that face biometric key in there. So you don't have to go to every single one of them and roll yourself. And you guys saw it took, what, two seconds? Not even get to walk yep. over and it worked. Uh, very good. Very, very quick uh, platform, right? And what I really liked about that is, if you guys didn't notice, he didn't have to touch the reader or, or tap it or wiggle it or whatever. It just started rolling him right away, right? Exactly so, where code, so. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, exactly, Tom. And so what, what we basically just done is we basically turned my face into a card. So our role in this whole mix now is we have turned my face into a card. And when I present my face at the reader, it's going to take the card number that was assigned to me in Cantech and it's going to push it down to the Cantech controller. So just so that you guys all understand sort of the relationship between us and Cantech, think of us like a reader, like just any traditional reader, and think of your face like the card. Uh, all we are doing is we're going to push that card number down to the access control panel. We make no decisions. All we're doing is authenticating. Uh, we do not make any decisions as far as granting access, not granting access, uh, access levels, schedules, all that sort of stuff that is sort of totally without, uh, totally in the um, uh, Cantech um, purview. So one of the benefits of that, guys, is that when they say they don't take any access control decisions, the access control level, granted schedules, alarm integration, whatever you have set up for that door is managed by Cantech. So you don't have to double think, was I granted and allowed because of Stonelock or not? Stonelock just tells us, yes, it's a valid face, and here's the card number, and then Canta controllers take care of the rest for the yep. access control decision making. Makes your life a lot easier not to double think what, what can go wrong somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. No, exactly. So th that, great, exp right? that experience that you saw, uh, you can see my screen okay, Tom? Yeah, of course. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So that experience of me enrolling and then walking right over and being able to authenticate, that is going to happen for every reader on the system. And I, we, sit at, we um, set a new benchmark in the biometric industry for how many users we can authenticate locally at the device level. So we're actually authenticating 10,000 biometric users at the device level, meaning that when I show up and I present my face on this second reader, my face was already sitting there waiting, for, my, my biometric key, I should say, was already sitting there waiting for me to, to do the authentication. The authentication was not happening at the gateway level, it's at the device level. So what that means is up to 10,000 users, they're all gonna have that same experience. Onboard and authenticate in about a quarter of a second and then, and then you know, through you go. Um, the uh, the uh, users above 10,000, so this is not to say we can only store 10,000, but we have a, a way we call smart and smart out of managing users in excess of 10,000, so we have a really cool way of doing that. But uh, basically, the decision, who's, who's at the door and what their card number and passing that down is happening at the reader. So if the network is offline, if the, if the gateway is unavailable, we are still authenticating locally at the device. Users are still coming and going. So from a reliability standpoint, it's it's pretty much you know the same as as having a card and a reader because you know the the the, pan, the we're we're talking from a hardware to hardware uh, level. That's actually very good. Ten thousand readers off ten thousand card holders or users offline. And the cool part, obviously, we haven't seen it yet. Obviously, the readers wired weekend back to the controller. So even if your network goes down you're still going to be good for 10,000 people uh, because the control will support those memory in there also. So thank you, Greg. So what we have done is we have a, the Cantec has developed a, a program through JCI called the Connected um, Program, right? This Connected Program allows uh, manufacturers like Stonelock and Cantec to write integrations together through our web services API. So Cadnik has developed a very powerful web service API. If you don't know how powerful it is, just use the Enterprise web and you'll see what it can do. So we've taken the API calls, worked with Stonelock, and wrote an integration to make the customer have a solution, not just two products. 
because anybody can have two products. Anybody could put a reader on the wall and have Wigan back to the controller. That's not really integration, right? The integration comes when you have uh, a one interface managing both platforms and have a seamless integration. So the connected partner, connected program allows manufacturers like Stonelock and others to connect to Cantec and give a, a, an ecosystem that people can use. Now, it is very secure because it allows uh, the partner to have a dedicated key that belongs to them. As a developer, you get a key and that key says, you're the guy that's going to call me. So even before you get in the, uh, the, in the login page or the login code, you actually have uh, an encryption that says, who are you? And as an end user, I have to allow this to come in. So if I don't want any integrations, and I even have your login, I can't get in. Because as a system, I've blocked all the integrations, or I allow the ones that I want, right? So we did, So the next slide there, you guys are going to see, we just didn't build card management. So yeah, so we didn't build card management out only. Uh, the Cantic integration with Stonelock is what we consider a level three integration, which is the highest one uh, as of yet. There's nothing higher as of an integration, and higher meaning the more complete one out there. Um, it's pretty cool because it, it does feel like it's one system uh, for the end user. It is an ecosystem for him. So it's a really seamless integration. And as you guys saw with Greg's PowerPoint uh, presentation, he used Entropaz Go. You could have used the web or the workstation. Nowhere did I have to teach somebody, check this checkbox, do it this way, play, you know, anything. Everything is seamless and you program a card holder like you would program in uh, in Entropass. It is real time. So the moment that card is pressed save, everything is down to the stone log gateway, the email is sent, and everything automatically synchronizes and works. Now, one really cool thing is that I actually get events in Entropass. I think this is where the integration goes higher. Yes, the real-time stuff is cool, but having my events coming back, like Tom, it's a reader, what events do you want, right? Yes, the weekend part sends me the card number, which is cool, and that's where I control everything, but what if somebody that is not enrolled tries to get into the system? He's gonna go in front of the reader, the reader obviously will deny him because the reader, the, the guy is not enrolled. It will send us an event in the Antropath software as a verify, as a failed verification. We'll know which door it's at. We'll know which reader failed from there. And through the integration, we can now pull a camera through Exact Vision, for example, and make a recording, have a pop-up, right? So notify the guard that somebody's trying to get in without having him being enrolled. Why is he doing it? Is some guy walking by a door as a visitor and he just sat, sat there and found it cool? Or he's trying to get into the IT room purposely, right? Just putting on masks, hats, glasses, no glasses, right? So those events are very powerful, giving a solution to our customer through the exact vision and Cantec and Stonelock uh, ecosystem as a whole. So again, everything is managed through Entropass. And with the Stonelock gateway, when you get it, the Stonelock integration is preloaded inside their code. There's a button, it says Cantec. You just type your username and password and IP, and off you go. There's no installing extra stuff on the Stonelock to get it working. On the Cantec side, it's part of the Enterprise web. There's a license for it. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Oh, there you go. So what, what's required, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's required? It does require Antipas corporate edition or global edition, right? And it does require Antipas A23. Remember I was telling you guys about those developer keys? Well, developer keys are added in Antipas as we go along. And for security purposes, we don't have like a thousand of them just lying around. We add them as we need them. So Stonelock's developer key goes forward with A23. So if you have a slightly older version of EntrePass, simply upgrade to the new to A23, and uh, you'll have the ability of using it. Now the cool part of this, it does require a connected license 
which is a license you add in EntryPass, which you technically have to buy, but we'll talk about pricing and, and parts in a few minutes. But the cool part, it's a one-time shot. You put it in EntryPass, and you can connect to your StoneLock gateway software. Now, whether I have one door, five doors, or 100 doors, or 128 doors, it doesn't matter. It's one license for the entire platform to connect to StoneLock, right? So again, you can grow and grow and add hardware as you want, and your cost doesn't go higher. And they, because they are integration number 88, we just pair the integration with them, and they start working through the connected through the connected program and the web API. I, I did want to point out one thing too here is that um, you know you, you're mentioning corporate edition and global edition because we need that smart link and the web service for for our, our integration. Um, we are still technically compatible though with uh, special edition. So if you do have a special edition system. Uh, you know, you can basically do a CSV export from um, from special edition CSV import into StoneLock, and then you're you're going to be able to still you know uh, uh, do that first read enrollment process. So once you bring bring your whole list in from special, you know you're still be, have your users show up, tap their card, follow the prompts, or show their QR, follow the prompts. But uh, it is, so we would call that compatible. It's not quite the 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 level of integration obviously that we've done because it's a little special what we've done with corporate and global but I just want to make sure people understand that if you're running you know Cantex standalone reader or special edition that's that's not an issue either. Of course, and if you want the enterprise go right, you need the corporate edition, which everybody uses. So that's true. Yep, that was great. That was how you wire this thing. All right, so because I saw I did see uh, Mr. Jose Villatoro asking uh, about uh, what kind of cable is required. Uh, so we've looked at how, uh, how biometric readers have, have been cabled also traditionally. We wanted to figure out how can we simplify this. So uh, really, I mean, at a, a very simple level, we've got uh, PoE. So PoE standards apply your 100 meters from the from a PoE switch or a PoE injector or what, whatever. It just needs uh, power and, and communication. So that's uh, that's to the, the reader. And then uh, out of the back of the reader, you have two different uh, terminal strips. One is your data zero, your data one in ground. For those that are not familiar, those are your standard Wigan terminals. Uh, and then optionally, we can bring a dry contact in for lock sense. And what lock sense will do is, so data zero, data one in ground, that's what's gonna push when a face is presented, the person's card number down to the controller. But so like, let's say it's 501, and Cantec only gave me access until five. So I don't have a current privilege to get into a door. So what will happen is uh, I will present my face. Uh, the reader will still turn green. The face on the reader will turn green. We recognize that's Greg Harmon. And then it's going to take my card number and push it down to Cantec. But if Cantec doesn't unlock the door, the lock status is going to, to, to provide that information on the display. So we're going to be able to tell whether or not it locks or unlocks. And uh, what's great there is a lot of biometrics, you don't get that. You, you present your fingerprint or whatever, and it's not working, and then you know you don't know where to start, and you're, you're blaming the, the biometric. This way, right on the screen, you can determine, uh, you know, it recognizes me, I just don't have the privilege on, on Cantec, so makes makes things nice and easy. But uh, from a cabling standpoint, yeah, so your, your standard Wigan, uh, two conductors for lock sense and PoE, that's it. It is not PoE right. plus, because we always get that question, it's just, just PoE. Go ahead, uh, Tom. That's very nice. It makes uh, life easy and simple wiring. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so that's great for face only customers. Um, if you want to do card plus face and you have one of these uh, uh, fancy IO smart readers, um, what you can do is uh, you can uh, deploy a board that we call a reader expansion module. The reader expansion module, uh, it can technically go anywhere, but we see most people deploying it either in the same cabinet with their KT400 or right next to it. Uh, the reader expansion module uh, is basically going to accept any third-party reader that speaks Wigand or OSDP, which uh, the IO Smart is in that category. So we, we connect it to the reader expansion module. The reader expansion module needs a Cat5 or Cat6 to go to the back of our device. So on the previous slide, we had three wires going in the back of the device. With this setup, we're only going to have one, one wire going in the back of the device, Cat5 or Cat6. That's your power and your communication. Uh, this will take care of all of the communication, your, your card number as well as your um, uh, lock sense. 
And then basically you're just gonna pass uh, either a few inches or a few feet of wire uh, from your reader expansion module to your controller. Uh, when I present a card, uh, we're gonna take a look at that card number at the reader level. We're gonna make sure that the, the person who has their face in front of the reader right now matches the card that was presented. And if those match, then we'll push their, that person's card number uh, down to the access control uh, controller. So again, all of this is happening independent of the gateway. It's all happening from, from uh, hardware to hardware level. Um, to power the reader expansion module, you can either use uh, PoE Plus. Uh, that'll give you enough uh, power to power a third-party reader, our faceplate, and the RAM. Uh, or optionally, you can use a 12-volt or 24-volt power supply. That's pretty cool. Um, so, oh, sorry, guys, go ahead, Greg. No, go. So that, that, that's what's important is when you get denied, for example, you can have somebody else's card and you're gonna get denied, you're still gonna get that event through the API and the integration in Cantec, right? Otherwise, with other biometrics that are just weakened, you're gonna get nothing. So we're never gonna be notified that somebody is trying to get in. What if I stole your card, right? I wouldn't yeah. be knowing that I'm trying to get in with this. So it, it gives the next level of integration with our system. And the, yeah, and the, it's it's funny, like uh, card sharing is a, is a thing that happens that nobody really talks about, you know, sharing of cards, sharing of pins. Uh, yeah, what, what's nice is if somebody is to, if I were to lend Tom my card, you know, it, it, he presents his card, we can get a, a verification mismatch because uh, a different biometric from the system uh, than the card that was presented, so so they don't match. Those those types of alerts, we can kind of uh, clamp down on on people sharing cards and, and kind of screwing up the, the integrity of your, your entire system. Um, from an install standpoint, one thing to, to point out that is very important because uh, when we look at, uh, at deployments for this, um, we are an indoor reader today. Uh, so this the device is uh, meant to be mounted at 48 inches um, and uh, it's me meant to be mounted indoors, uh, not in direct sunlight. Uh, and the reason for that is one, uh, it's just from a, an ingress protection standpoint, it's just not built to be put out and withstand the elements. But uh, more importantly, uh, our, our device floods the user's face with near-infrared. The sun emits a significantly more powerful near-infrared than our device does. And so the, the, under the con current configuration, it just it cannot compete outdoors. There are certain times of days where we just can't authenticate users as consistently as, as we would like to put our seal of approval on. Uh, so at this point, we're, we're, we're making sure that any designs, any deployments that are happening, this device is going indoors. Um, we are working on an outdoor reader, uh, but uh, today we want to make sure that uh, it's being deployed and set up for success. So guys, I think as a integration, I think we kind of beat up the integration a lot. We tied it together, we made sure it works. And I think we tried to explain as much as possible how tight this thing is. This is not just another plugin to our software. And here we go, right? We went to the exact route, to the DSC route, Stonelock route. They're almost same level, really tied together as an integration, right? Uh, uh, so we said, you know what? What more can we do? How do we tie the whole platform together, not just as a product? How do we offer a solution to not our end users, but our dealers? So we're actually very proud to say that as of today, as of now, uh, you can buy Stonelock through Cantec and from anywhere that Cantec is sold. So whether you buy it from company A or company B, distributor A or B, whatever, you can buy it through a Cantec part number, right? So the benefit here is you buy your KT400, you buy your Stonelock at the same time. Also, uh, people love our kits, our KT400 expansion kits, or KT1 kits, we just can't stop selling them. Uh, we actually bundle together in a kit, a Stonelock kit. So we have a kind of a starter kit. We have our, our software uh, license that comes the, uh, the Stonelock Go license running on Linux, or you can buy a hardware box, right? You don't want to deploy your own Linux license and box for all this. You can just uh, buy a hardware box that comes with Stonelock on it, the software, and the number of readers you want. So it's one part number for everything you want, but it also includes the connected license. Remember I told you the connected license, you have to add an entry pass? Well, you don't have to not buy it because the starter kit includes the software license, the connected license, or the hardware, whichever you want, 
and you can add three units in that bundle. Now, if you want 20 new units, just buy a starter kit and then just buy 17 more stone lock readers and off you go, right? So we want to make it very easy for our customers to actually have uh, stone lock being able to be purchased and being used. Right. Now, you, you touched on it there, uh, Tom. I wanted to just bounce back real quick because uh, I see a question in the chat, and I want to make sure that we were clear on on sort of what's in, involved from a software deployment standpoint. Uh, what what I just did with that demo, uh, we have EntrePass 2.3 or higher, which is what I'm running uh, on my uh, in a VM right right next to me here. Uh, inside of EntrePass, what we're going to install is a uh, Stonelock Windows integration service. So it'll run right on that same machine, similar to like a, a smart link in the way that it runs like a ser service. So that's going to run uh, in that Windows environment. And that comes with the, the gateway when you when you purchase the gateway. Uh, and then separate from that, our device is going to be loaded. Uh, in, in what we use is uh, Ubuntu and, and soon to be Red Hat. But basically, we're going to create a VM and we're going to drop our software on that on that VM. Uh, but this is a, a separate machine, could be a separate physical machine, or you could you could virtualize it with Hyper-V or VMware. Um, and then basically we're going to point our Windows integration service to where that VM is. And that, that's how we're going to establish that that integration. Um, yeah, but and Greg, then to, to talk, I don't want to deploy VMs. This is why me? I like the stone lock. I don't like the VM part. Well, I do. But if, what <laughs> if I don't know how to deploy a VM, right? It was a kind of a yep. trick question. Yes. This is where the stone lock uh, go hardware gateway comes, right? Yes. Exactly, and that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. So, uh, you know, as you get into your large corporate clients, they may want to run things in Ubuntu or Red Hat or whatever, and that's fine. We're totally flexible. Similar to, to the way Cantech has the corporate edition software in the the Intebo or Intebo, people pronounce it differently. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're the same from that same box, right? We put it together. Yep. So then I told Greg, how can we go one step further? <laughs> and and we came up as a team and we decided also for this is the first time ever we're going to have a one-stop shop for technical support right we said to ourselves how many times do you guys call a company for access control and, and then the guy on tech support helps you and it tells you yeah but the rest is not my part call the other guy and then you okay fine whatever then you call the other guy and he starts troubleshooting and he tells you the funniest part that's not my fault call call the first guy first again. Guy. So, yeah. No, not all that anymore. So Catech offers a one-stop stop shop for tech support. You call you call us for a Catech and your stone lock problems, right? Deploying your software, wiring it, configuring it, the integration, and, and all your stone lock needs. Now, if ever we need stone lock to get involved, we're gonna get them involved for the higher troubleshooting. But again, as you guys saw, it is a reader that works very well. So hopefully we'll never need them for this. But if we do, they're there to help us and take on the harder cases. So you want to give you, again, a whole uh, user experience from A to Z from all that point. I saw somebody ask if uh, if this will work on the KT1. And the answer is uh, absolutely, as it will with every other uh, uh, controller that uh, Cantec manufactures. So Cantec's been making panels since 86. KT200 was the first. And we can push 26-bit uh, weekend down there. Uh, the integration obviously is happening at the software level. Uh, their software has carried all their hardware through all the decades, and so uh, yeah. So Gord, to answer your question, we can uh, we can work with any any panel that uh, Cantech manufactures. And 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 uh, Greg, it's not only 26-bit. Remember, we can do XSF also on this thing, right? So we now can. we have the full card number again. Something that we want to go one step further. Why offer part of the card or the yep. card, right? It's you want to offer the entire card number through the XSF format. Yep, XSF, and we have a new uh, driver for uh, SSF, if, if uh, which I believe is 70, 79 bits or some. But uh, yeah, we can support uh, SSF too. We have that driver preloaded in Stonelock ready to uh, to accept all the Cantec formats. Um, so uh, I'll just point out that that I put a lot of investment and time into trying to make like it, it's kind of a physical demo. It, you know, people see this stuff in in person and they they love it because it's like it's it's pretty amazing how quick it authenticates you and and you got to kind of use it to really experience it. But I tried to replicate that with this setup here, uh, and I think think have have done a pretty good job. And and I've been since uh, since I started at Stonelock, I've been doing demo after demo after demo in this sort of remote, especially because of COVID, in this remote setup. 
If you have customers that you'd like to show this product to, I would love to help uh, help do a demo with you collaboratively. You got myself, Tom, you have a whole bunch of resources from the Cantech team. Uh, please reach out to sales at stonelock.com and we would be happy to help coordinate a, 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 a custom presentation for your customers. Um, oh, there's more, Greg. Hey, go ahead. Thank there you. is more. Yes, we uh, that that email address. You can also send an email if you're interested in, in putting uh, from an office demo standpoint. We're running a uh, an office demo program. Uh, so if you want to get a uh, an office demo unit, uh, send us an email and uh, and we can set you up there. Uh, the hardware will go through Cantech, uh, so you'll purchase the hardware through Cantech. Uh, Stonelock will help coordinate the uh, the software at no charge and helping getting that that software set up and online and integrated with Cantech with you. And my favorite last point is, again, we want to set, as a dealer, we want to make your life a lot easier. So as you guys can see, some of the names are very familiar. The Stonelock product is rep to most of our uh, dealers, um, rep firms across North America. So the Titan, the IMI, the CIVI, the MTR, and so on, are, are all the same rep firms for Cantec and Stonelock in most of the United States and Canada. This is a great thing because now the same guy, uh, Carl, for example, or Jeff can do the whole uh, solution for you. Yep. Yeah, so so we have almost 70 reps across North America. We have outfitted them all uh, with uh, Go Readers. Uh, they're all also Cantech reps, so they've got the ability and they've got it all set up with their integration. So it's not just me. We got, you know, a, an army of about 70 now. And then we've also sent to Cantech to Tom and, and Jason and uh, um, Francis, like all the uh, Cantech R RSMs have also got Stonelock gear as well. So we are uh, basically one giant united uh, sales force. So if, uh, if, if one of these is the rep firm you use, you'll be able to reach out to them and They'll be locked and loaded and ready to, to support you on Stonelock. Perfect. Um, Tom, anything uh, anything before we get wrapped up? No, I think that's that's, uh, that's all I have to say. I think it's a great integration, as you guys saw. Uh, we tied everything together. So if you have any questions, ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to ask them in the in our question portion, and our, our um, beloved Yannick will definitely answer them as we go along. Yep. Um, we have a few more minutes. We could answer some verbally if it is. Yeah, and, and I was going to mention uh, there, there was one there about being sold overseas. Absolutely. Uh, if you want to send us an email, we can uh, we can get you coordinated for sure. Um, any uh, pop out in particular there, Tom? Uh, so, yes, yeah, so the benefit, it does work with a KT1. It is a weekend reader. Uh, it does support XSF, right? Um, and it's uh, if the distance of the cable are all standard cables for any kind of reader, I think all we've answered all the questions specifically. Yep. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask them now. If not, uh, we'll hope to see you guys soon. Again, you have the emails that are there, so Cantic Sales at taikoint.com or sales at stonelock.com. Um, again, we reach out to us. We'll be here for you guys to help you guys out. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, everybody.